it's day three of Children's Mental Health Week. Following on from what I shared yesterday about the importance of raising an emotionally intelligent child, let's move on to understanding behaviour. All behaviour has a cause, and when responding to behaviour in our children that we don't like, it really helps to assume that there is actually a valid reason behind their misbehaviour. Behaviour is essentially a form of communication, yet in the moment, children, and sometimes adults too, can't always explain in words what is going on when a child shouts, hits a friend or sibling, totally ignores you, speaks disrespectfully, etc. Our job in the moment is to just slow down and get curious. Ask yourself, what is my child trying to communicate to me? They might be tired, hungry, overwhelmed, seeking attention, needing more structure or responsibility. And in the moment, don't worry instantly about the behaviour and what to do about it. Most parents just respond to the behaviour without trying to determine the cause. And the best way to explain this is actually using the analogy of an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg, what you see above the surface of the water, is your child's behaviour. But the much bigger issue, represented by the bulk of ice below the surface, is what you can't see. And that is your child's feelings that actually drive their behaviour. If you're only responding to the behaviour, you're not tackling or getting right under the surface to the root cause. It's a bit like repeatedly pulling out weeds from the grass. If you don't get under the surface and take out the roots, the weeds will just keep reappearing. And it's the same with emotions. When anyone, a child or an adult, is experiencing a difficult emotion, such as anger, anxiety, sadness, frustration, overwhelm or stress, their amygdala has completely taken over. It's often referred to as the reptilian brain or the fight, flight, freeze response. And in that moment, the logical reasoning part of your brain, known as the prefrontal cortex, is not able to engage as your brain is totally flooded with emotions. I have found with my own four children that it really helps to simply explain a bit of this brain science so that they themselves actually understand what is happening when their emotions are hijacking the thinking part of their brain. Children should know that all feelings are acceptable. They should never feel bad for having a feeling, even though some of their behaviour in response to that emotion may be unacceptable. Tomorrow, I will share with you what to do in the moment to help your child get their emotions back to a more neutral place so that they can feel calm. For further support, please see educatingmatters.co.uk.